today I am working on a heater. This is a space heater. It is electric. And what I like about it is we have a nice clean diagram right here. We are going to troubleshoot this together by reading the diagram. So I will be referring to this as I'm taking my measurements and hopefully that can help those that struggle with reading diagrams help you out a little bit. Someone's obviously done a bunch of work on this before. There's wire nuts everywhere. It is about 50 degrees in here. First thing we want to do is make sure that the thermostat is actually on and that we are calling. So this would be off. Hear that click? And that will turn the thermostat on. We've got our transformer right here that turns high voltage into low voltage. I believe this is a 208 system, but we're gonna double check. We've got our thermostat right here and our main terminal block behind these wires. And it's gonna be hard to see this on the camera, but right there is one. Looks like a limit thermostat. And behind that, there is another limit thermostat. One of them has wires on it, and one of them doesn't. Got the meter set to volts, AC volts, and we have 212 volts. Here's the diagram that I'm working on. The dotted lines mean that it is not from the factory. It is optional wiring. This is a three-phase system. This is wired for three-phase. I'm going to show you the measurements that I took real quick, but I just want to go over one thing that if there's a solid line that crosses like right here, that is not connected. So this is so red right here is not connected to black because it goes right through. Now, this dotted line here, which I'm going to color in here in a second, when it goes into a line like this, and it doesn't go through, that means it is connected. So I'm gonna show you the L1 and L2 colored in first. That's yellow. So we've got L1, L2 going to the contactor. L3 is gonna go to the other side of the heating elements and the other side of the motor. It, I'm not gonna go over how three phase works. The only thing you need to know about reading this diagram and how I'm using it to troubleshoot is that you need power on this side and this side of the load for the motor to run. You need power here and here for this element to come on. Let me go ahead and color in L3. L3, there's nothing blocking L3 from going anywhere. There's no safety switches according to this diagram. There's no safety switches or anything that's blocking L3 from going to one side of all of these loads. And when I say load, I mean motor, heating element, heating element, heating element. Now the voltage check that I just did, the very first one I did was at the contactor. And I got 208 between these two points. Another check I could have made and probably should have just to make sure that I got voltage everywhere is here to here and then here to here and then here to here. And I should have gotten 208, but I didn't make that voltage check. What I did do, I didn't put it on the video is I just manually pushed in the contactor and I saw and smelled the heating elements start to heat up. So I know I have full voltage. Now I could make some other measurements, but I'm gonna go straight to the terminal block and I'm gonna go between R and C, which is power and common. And we have 28 volts. Now we just ruled out a bunch of things by making this measurement. We know the transformer's good. And we've got a pretty good idea that this is not going to be a high voltage issue, although that's totally not ruled out yet. Next, I'm going to make sure that we are indeed getting a call. Now to do that, I'm going to go between common and W. We have 28 volts between common and W. Here is our contactor. 
Now we need 24 volts going to that. So if 24 volts is not going to that, then it's not gonna push in. And that's gonna be powered by W. So let's take a measurement at the contactor. Zero volts going to the contactor. Going to kill the power. Let's go over what I just measured there. This is the low voltage block, just this side, not these over here. This is for the fan, this is high voltage. We've got our common wire from the transformer. We've got our red wire from the transformer. And our red wire goes to the thermostat. At the very beginning of the video, I turned the thermostat on. Um, let me go ahead and just, there, there's our common wire. And when I measured between C and R, I got 24 volts. And those 24 volts are coming from the transformer. So the first measurement that I made was between common and red. And I had 24 volts right there. So that's going to tell us that our transformer is good. Now, if common and W has 24 volts, that means W gets energized. I'll go ahead and fill that in. So common and W, W is energized, it goes straight to the contactor. If we follow common, it goes through this manual reset limit that doesn't exist. This is just an optional reset limit that you could put in and it goes to the contactor, but it has to go through this limit overheat cutout first. This is, besides a broken water, a wire, this is the only thing stopping this circuit from completing because we did a measurement we did a measurement here and here and we got zero volts if we did a measurement from w to here we would get 24 volts if we did a measurement from w to here we would get zero volts so this limit overheat cutout is bad i'm going to show you how to do a ohms test on this next just so we can definitively rule that out and make sure that it's not like a broken wire somewhere in the system. So instead of having this right here where everything works, right now we have, we have this, where the W is going to the contactor, but the common is not. So there's no return path. We cannot energize the coil for these contacts to close. There's our, sw there's our, um High limit switch that opens on temperature rise. I think above 325. I'm going to remove one of these leads. And just do a continuity check across it. Always remove a lead when doing a continuity check across the switch. Or else it can throw you off. And I've got OL. Now, before I order this part, I'm gonna take this other lead that goes to that limit, and I'm just gonna jump this out. I wanna make sure that the fan comes on and all the heating elements come on. I wanna make sure everything works so that there's no question that there's only one part that needs to be ordered. All right, so I got that crappy fuse in there. Just bypassing this to test everything else. That's it. Then it's going back to no power. Thermostat to on. All right, fan just kicked on. I opened up this side panel. We have access to all three elements. Just gonna do an amp draw on all of these elements. We got eight there, eight amps on that one. And turn the power back off. Off, out of commission, not even running that. So when I jumped this out, everything came on, everything worked, the motor came on. Um, what about this motor? Why did this come on? This looks like a normally closed symbol. I'm not sure. I really don't understand this about the diagram because the part that was in there is normally open. 
and it actually closes on temperature. When the temperature reaches a certain degrees, it closes, which powers the motor. So I'm not sure about this because it looks the same as this thermostat right here. These are both thermostats. Anyways, just wanted to show you how I used this diagram and I wasn't really guessing about anything. I was just connecting point A to point B until they didn't connect. And that's how I found out that the overheat cutout thermostat was bad.